Today's all about learning fractions of amounts. Um, there's something I wanted to emphasize just before we start. We're, we're, we're going to use uh, what we call bar models. We're going to use counters to work out fractions of amounts. There's tasks where you can go and extend your thinking. Now, in maths, take the time and the patience to understand it really well, to do it in different ways. There's no rush, it's not a race to, to, to get there first. Because what we need to make sure that you do is you can see it and you understand it really clearly. Because then it will be long lasting, long lasting. Task B is not better than task A. It's just the stages that we all need to go through if we're going to build memories that are going to last for the long run. Um, so do that. Be patient, use the equipment, draw the pictures, understand it really well. This is really going to help building it for the long run, so enjoy. So for today's video, being able to divide is going to be a useful skill. Uh, we worked on that a few weeks ago and we're going to recap on that to start off with. Um, and we were saying when we're dividing, sometimes we share, uh, sometimes we use times table facts so we might just know. And sometimes we need to think, for example here, how many fours are there in... And I'm going to show you these examples, see if we can think about the different strategies that we use here. Um, so 28 divided by 4. There, I know the answer is 7, and I'll probably do that just by thinking. Well, I know that 4 times 7 equals 28. So there, I use a times table fact. Now, if I know that, I can also work out 280 divided by 4. It's actually 70. Um, and can you see, it's just because 280 is 10 times more than 28. Now, for 480 divided by 4, I actually use a slightly different strategy. I can't use my times tables facts. But here, I actually just think, well, if I'm dividing by such a large quantity like this by 4, I can just split that up, half it and half it again. Um, so, um, basically, I'm splitting 480 into these four equal boxes. And I'm thinking 120, 240, that's half. Uh, so 120 is a quarter. Uh, is 480 divided by 4 is 120. Um, whereas 52 divided by 4, I probably do that in a slightly different way. Again, I might not know that as a times table fact, um, but there I'm thinking, well, how many 4s are there in 52? Um, now, to work that out, I would tend to split up the 52 into 40 and 12. I know there's 10 4s in 40, 3 4s in 12, so in total that is 13 4s in 52. 22 divided by 4, I'll probably do the same thing. I don't know a times table fact for that one. But I'm thinking, how many 4s in 22? Um, and so what I do is I split up the 22 into 20. That's 5 lots of 4. And 2. So the answer there, 5 remainder 2. Right, your turn. Have a look at these questions here. Um, when you're answering them, can you think about how what you can use one fact sometimes to work out another one? They're kind of related to some of them in certain ways. Uh, which strategy are you using? Have a think. Uh, pause the video and have a go. Okay, and um, let's have a look. Um, and I wonder what you did here. Now, for me, when I did 600 divided by 4, I wasn't thinking how many 4s in 600. I just split the 600 in half, and then that was 300, halved it again. That gave me 150. 36 divided by 4, well, I just knew that 9 times 4 is 36. Now, that actually links to 76 divided by 4, because what's the difference here? There is 40 more here than there is here. Um, so actually, that is just another lot of 10 lots of 4. Um, so it's actually 19. That was quite a tricky one there. Um, whereas 38 divided by 4, well, that's just, of course, it's 2 more than 36 divided by 4. So the answer, 9 remainder 2. Now, I thought we'd also have a look at some I know and so facts and see if I know one calculation, how I can use that to work out another one. So I wonder how you get on with these two. Uh, pause the video and have a quick go. And let's have a look. So 32 divided by 4 is 8. So 320 is, is 10 more than lots of 32. Um, so that will be 80. And 88 divided by 4 is 22. 92 is 4 more. So the answer there, 23. Now today we're looking at fractions of quantities. It's going to develop a bit of a different thing from what we've looked at so far. Some children will have already done a lot of this. You might have already done this in year three and you might have done it in class in year four. 
Uh, whereas others, uh, for example, some of our year threes, this might be the first time you've come across this. So we're going to do it in ways that we can all access. And then there's going to be strategies that will come in for how you can deepen the challenge if this is something that you're already familiar with. It's going to be great, really important for you, I think, this one. Um, so, so far, we've been looking at fractions of one. And we're going to move to looking at fractions of amount. So this is one. This is one rectangle. And we've been looking at a fraction like this one, three quarters. And what I'm doing is I'm splitting this one rectangle into four pieces and three of them are shaded. So it's three quarters. Now what we're moving towards is looking at fractions of amounts. So here I've got 20 red dots. And this time what I'm doing is rather than splitting up a shape, I'm splitting up a quantity, these 20 dots. So let's say these 20 dots, if I split them into quarters, then I'm looking at of 20, a quarter, each of these quarters is 5. 5, 10, 15, 20. So a quarter of 20 equals 5. And 3 quarters of 20? Well, I've just got to take 3 of those quarters. So it is 15. Now, when you were very, very first introduced to finding fractions of amounts, you might have done it something like this. Seen sweets, looked at a question like half of six, and you need to think of six and put it into two equal halves. There, a half of six equals three. Then you might have been given a question like this one, which you might not have known as immediately, a third of 12. Well, similar, the whole is 12, to split it into three equal parts, um, and there, 4 is a third of 12. And we can develop from there by looking at that like a bar model. Um, so I've got to do 12, and I've got to do 12 divided by 3. Um, so I could think how many 3s in 12. There's 4. Um, 12 split into 3 equal groups is, is 4. 2 thirds of 12, then, it's 2 of those thirds. So rather than it being 1 third, um, I, I'm now looking for two of those thirds. So there, two thirds of 12, well, that is eight. And then you again, you might progress to a question like this one. A quarter of 20, um, I could split 20 into four equal groups, or I could think how many fours in 20, it's five. Um, they're just two different division strategies that we could use here, but a quarter of 20 is five. And so, of course, three quarters of 20, it's three of those groups, is 15. OK, so have a look. Uh, three quarters of 24. I've given this question to children before. Um, so I've seen these diagrams. Um, which one is correct? Can you explain the mistakes that have been made? Uh, pause the video and have a look at that one. OK, and when you're ready, let's have a look. Um, so mistake that we have here is we've split 24 into four groups, but they're not equal groups. 10, 10, 2, and 2. Um, now, 24, we don't split the 24 into three groups. We need to split into four groups. So this one is incorrect. So we need to, this is telling me the denominator, how many groups I'm splitting my 24 into. Um, so I've got to think either how many fours in 24, or just think those these four groups there, how big will each group be? Um, and it is one quarter of of 24 is 6, so 3 quarters, 6, 12, 18 there. So hello again. Let me see how we can access these ideas uh, and then how we can really deepen them. Um, so one way, if I'm looking at 3 quarters of 12, I can think, well, let's get 12, and I do have 12 here, and we'll get them into quarters. And then I can see there, so I had 12, um, and they're now in quarters, so 3 quarters of 12, it's 1, 2, three quarters there. So three quarters of 12 equals nine. Um, now, let's say I know three quarters of 12 equals nine. Then, well, what will three quarters of 16 be uh, without doing another calculation? So I just need, of course, to have uh, the thing that I'll need to notice is it's four more. Um, and I'll need to get this four in quarters. So how many more will it be? Well, it will, of course, be another three more, four, eight, 12. And why was that? Because it was four more. Let me turn them over so you can really, really see them. Um, so the red ones are showing three quarters of 12. And then if I had another four, well, three quarters of 16, of course, it's these sections we're looking for. And they've 
each section has got one more in. Um, so three quarters of 16 uh, will be 12. Now let's see if we can come up with another related calculation to that first one. So we know three quarters of 12 equals nine. Well, what about three quarters of 120? How does that relate? Um, well, let's have a little look here. I've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. Uh, well, of course, it would be the same kind of process, really. And how many will we have in each section? I'm um, hopefully you are already telling your computer at the moment that it will be, well, I'll be looking at these three quarters. So it will be 30, 60. It is going to be 90. All righty. Now, if you want to really extend your thinking, and you want more challenge, you're thinking, oh, I can go further than this, uh, that is wonderful. Here is how I'd suggest you have a go at doing it. Okay, now, what we're going to do is, is we're going to have a go at an I know and so. I know so. So, two-thirds of 90. Now, when we know that, what else can we work out? This is a brilliant way of extending yourself. And you can take the challenge to whatever level you want to. And I want to see the examples of what you do. It would be great if you can. Now, two-thirds of 90, well, how do I do that calculation? Well, I need to do 90 and split it into thirds. Uh, so 90 divided by 3 is 30. I need two of those thirds, so it's going to be 60. Mm, now, let me think if we can come up with some different related calculations. Um, so I guess I could work out, well, if I know that two-thirds of 90 is 60, well, one-third uh, of 90, well, that is just 30. Um, we can just about see that there. Um, and let's think about another one. Well, I guess I, I know two-thirds of 900 must be 600. Uh, there's another one that I could do. Um, let's see if we come up with a few more. So let's say we do two-thirds of 93. How is that going to be different? Well, I've got another three. I need to split that three into thirds and then have two of those thirds. So it's going to be two more. It's going to be 62. Um, Let's say we do two thirds of 180. And um, we'll think, well, what's the same? It's still two thirds. Now it's double. Um, so what's that going to be? It's 120. I can do that without doing any new calculation there. Well, oh, I've got another two arrows. Let me see if we can come up with another, another couple. Well, I'll tell you what else I know is I know that two thirds of nine is going to equal six without having to do any more calculation. Um, now, how's about this one? Two sixths of 90. Hmm. Now, what we've got here is it's the same quantity, but we've doubled the denominator. How's that going to affect this number? It's going to make it half the size. There we go. So that is an example of an I know and so. When you're doing your independent task, it could be for some of you that this is where you spend your time digging into some of these examples. Oh, we've got another arrow there. Let's see if we can come up with one more. Um, let's have a go at um, two thirds of 45. It's going to be half and it is also going to be 30. There we go. Got to get all those arrows in. Um, I wonder how you're going to get on if that's how you focus your time. And so here's today's tasks. We've got a task A and a task B. Now, just remember that some of you will, will only just really have started learning about fractions of amounts, and some of you will have already have done a lot of learning about that. So choose the activity that's appropriate for you. So we've got task A, which is the correct method here, and which one's a, a, a mistake. Now, for the questions, they've been designed. So you can actually do these questions, for example, with counters, moving the counters around, or maybe you could use a bar model to show them. But these we can do practically. Um, and do do that if... if you know, that's the stage that you're up to, to move yourself forward to the next level. And then there's a question here, one of those methods is correct, but which one? Uh, I've got the same question for task B, but task B's questions, the design of them is more that you would use a bar model. I'm not expecting you to go and get 80 items and to divide them out. Um, now for the I know and so question, so we know that three quarters of 60 equals 45. Can you think of other related facts for that one? So if we know that, we can also work out and see how many different examples you can come up with. I would really love it if you could send through any of your own examples of I know and so questions that you design involving fractions of quantities. I would love to show them if there are any on Friday. So please do email them through. 
Uh, just like normal, the answers are at the bottom. Uh, I hope it's been really helpful. We're going to build on this, build on this, build on this further tomorrow. I'll see you back there then, and we'll keep moving you on to that next level.